And the first clip we're going to feature is Theo Vaughan talking to Mike Rowe, the legendary, the legendary Mike Rowe. Obviously, you know, Mike Rowe, Dirty Jobs, absolute legend. First things first, isn't it interesting that Theo Vaughan is able to consistently get absolute banger guests on these podcasts? And they seem to always have a great time on there because he's just, you know, he's affable, he's easy to talk to, he's funny he's laid back it always seems to happen but i'm also impressed of his ability to just inf to interview just random people you interview a guy that works as a plumber a guy that works in a morgue you know a single mum. like he just has an ability to bring out the best in people that he interviews no matter if they're famous or just a regular joe schmo joe schmo and it seems to work for him and all those shows all episodes do numbers because people legitimately want to hear him speak to different people and also just want to hear him speak in general because it always sort of works that way. So it's pretty cool to see the difference in the level of guests that Theo gets compared to what they get over in the fire and the kid. Brendan Shaw and all those guys get terrible guests now for reasons unbeknownst to me. Maybe I know why. Maybe it's because of Brian Callan's, you know, allegations and the whole Brendan Shaw, you know, Annie and Kalila thing. For some reason, Brendan Shaw's or oh, the fight and the kids, sorry, guests have been terrible, isn't it? It seems that like they're getting all the people who have been cancelled, right? They got that TJ Miller guy, they had Dane Cook on. Everyone there has kind of been somewhat slighted or cancelled by the public. They seem to get on. Oh yeah, I think yes, Uche said here as well. Santino, yeah, Santino gets good guests too. Yeah, Santino's a Andrew Santino and Ari Shafir are two very, very underrated interviewers. I think sometimes this may sound counterintuitive and go against the things I said before, but I think even someone like a Burt Kreischer, especially if he's interviewing a fellow comedian because he loves to talk about comedy and inside baseball stuff and politics and whatnot, I feel like Burt Kreischer, Ari Shafir, Andrew Santino are actually really underrated um, interviewers. Honestly, really think so. They're really good interviews, especially Ari Shafir. His podcast is ridiculously underrated. Maybe because he doesn't do it so consistently as others or whatnot, but he's really good. And also, like I said, and you know, as Uche mentioned, Andrew Santino's awesome and Burt Crash when he's interviewing a fellow comedian if you like that kind of talk I know it can get a bit boring to hear comedians talk about flipping comedy and there's only a thousand of them around and they're so amazing I know it can be annoying but I feel like those guys are really good also but anyway so this is a good little chat they have between Micro and Theo Vaughan and it's interesting what Theo says here because it sounds like it sounds like to me to me that Theo is ridiculously over the moon and happy that he's not on King of the Sting anymore and and this clip highlights that maybe one of the reasons why he didn't like King of the Sting was because of the location of the studio. I guess when they moved the studio, they moved it to this swanky um, building where there's other offices and studios. But I guess it was maybe a bit far out from where he lived. And it was next to really corporate kind of highfalutin buttoned up places. And it kind of went against everything he kind of thinks a podcast should be. So it's an interesting clip to highlight. Congratulations for, uh, for being in Nashville. And for carving out a carving out a piece of something real. I mean, this is so, you know, I do a podcast too. Mm -hmm. It keeps me pretty busy, but I'm on the road all the time. So I'm doing it on like Riverside or Zoom or, you know, and it's not the same as, you know, sitting in an upholstered chair with a guy in his house with, the, you know, it's, it's like cable access meets yeah. you know, real. I mean, yeah. honestly, like we're this far from Wayne's world. Yeah, yeah and, we are. <laughs> <laughs> and, and people are watching like lots of people are watching so congrats on that oh thank you man yeah i think we've been looking for different studios recently but there's a level of not i don't want to there's a level of rogueness mm -hmm. that has to accompany a podcast space yeah it's like in la because we have a studio in la and we've been looking there and it's like man this is a there's a chase bank in the lobby that's not it, that ain't it. we need like a missing person poster <laughs> within 60 feet it doesn't need to be on the building but you know what i'm saying there yeah. needs to because there's a level still of grunge to it you right, know right 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 um that i think always needs to be there if i walk into a corporate place i in my head feel more corporate and so it puts me in a different headspace. Um, so I'd imagine He's absolutely right. And maybe that was part of the reason why he didn't want to do King of the Sting anymore. Personally, for me, I don't necessarily think that's true. I think in general, he probably was put in a really awkward position when all that stuff with Brendan and Kalila and Annie went down. 
because obviously he's really good friends and very close with Bobby Lee, obviously close with Kalila. He didn't know where his allegiances would be and how he kind of would stand on that. And then when the Annie stuff would happen also, I'd imagine he's probably cool with her also. That was probably awkward to deal with. And in general, having listened to Theo a lot on podcasts, and I was a real big fan of his when he used to go on flipping Joey Diaz on the church was happening when he was kind of freaking out on there and um, back when he maybe did streams or whatnot or just in general talking about his past stories and drug stories and stuff it's always amazing i got the feeling that he's very he's a very sensitive soul somebody that clearly doesn't like confrontation or being put in awkward positions i don't think he just enjoys it overall and maybe it's because of his upbringing maybe because of how hard he found it to become successful in entertainment in general until he started getting into podcasting it didn't really work out for him in kind of the conventional entertainment industry and maybe because of the treatment he went through he just doesn't want to ever be in a position where he's made to feel awkward or he's put in a corner or has to pick sides i don't know whatever i just get the feeling he just doesn't enjoy that sort of stuff that kind of like backstabby la type of comedy type of shit and essentially brendan put him in a corner put him in a place where he had to pick a side through no fault of his own because Brendan wanted to flip and see Kalila's boobies right or wanted to you know walk flipping Annie to his truck allegedly so that made him feel awkward and then you know doing the show also I think over the time it just felt like the premise of King of the Sting when it first started was great I thought so because as I mentioned in another stream oddly enough I think if you remember your lore King of the Sting started off of the fact that when Theo was introduced to the Fire and the Kid kind of universe the relationship he had with Brendan was very kind of back and forth, like brother, little brother, big brother sort of thing. They'd kind of rip each other on a podcast, which kind of led to them deciding let's do a show. And then the show premise was like they'd kind of rip each other, like, you know, you look like this, you look like that, you look like this, you look like that. And obviously Theo's really good at it. He's like elite level. And obviously Brendan's obviously not funny and clearly somebody that's very thin skinned and doesn't really take well to being laughed at. So that whole premise behind that show really run its course quickly because Brendan just doesn't like to be the butt of the jokes and then as they tried to live and explore it and do whatever you know evolve it didn't really work out and then over time it just kind of ran out of steam to give Brendan a little bit of um favor in this regard I still kind of blame Theo for it because I feel like he being somebody who's a bit of a sense of soul doesn't like confrontation I don't think he was brave enough to tell Brendan I don't want to do the show anymore because I think he was tapped out a long time ago even probably I'd maybe even argue he might have been tapped out of doing King of the Sting before the whole thing happened with Kalila and Annie he probably was over it anyway but he didn't but then that maybe stuff set him over the edge but he wasn't brave enough to say I don't want to do it and it had to re and I think all the times that he'd cancel and all that kind of stuff you think he was hoping and wishing that would be an excuse to leave but you know brendan didn't want to let him go because if you go on the fire and if you go on sorry if you go on the king and the sting youtube account and you scan through the episodes it's pretty easy to tell who the big draw is when chris wasn't cancelled it was him him coming on a guest appearance here and there or maybe at the start you'd get a big boost in numbers but the guaranteed hundred thousand plus views two hundred thousand plus three hundred thousand four hundred thousand plus views came because of fear if he was in the thumbnail, if he was on the show, his fans would flood it and it'd go crazy. So clearly, because of that, Brendan didn't want to let him go too quickly. But I think he was tapped out in a while. But I still try to kind of blame Theo for not being honest and just saying, hey, I don't want to do a show anymore and kind of ending it. But it's interesting that he said what he said, because if you know about that new studio where Thick Boys thick boy productions or whatnot is based you know it's very swanky it's the same place they film the food truck diaries and it's not it's not your conventional podcast studio let's say that right it's very swanky it's very sort of upmarket and you can imagine Theo feeling a little bit awkward being there and being a proper comic you are not going to feel the comfortableness being there you want to be kind of amongst others and amongst the trash and next to maybe uh you know the strip where hookers basically walk up and down you know what i mean that's what you want to be you don't want to be surrounded by literal people that maybe work at chase bank or whatnot you know or own a startup and whatnot you want to be around the absolute gutter gutter of the people but you know it is what it is um i guess it all kind of worked out for everybody in general but i do recommend checking it out please do watch the show the um, episode with micro i actually finished it earlier today it's really really good episode number what is it episode number 146 this past weekend with fear of Vaughan definitely one of my favorites on the comedy podcast circuit in terms of something that i watch and i know is going to be good regardless of who's on it or who's getting interviewed definitely check it out if you haven't already